And with that, ladies and gentlemen, it's exactly 4.30 Eastern Time, or wherever you may be around the world, it is time to begin. Please put your hands together and welcome our host and presenter today from DayTradeToWin.com. All right, everyone, let's do a quick sound check here. Let me know if you can hear me loud and clear. My name is John Paul, founder of DayTradeToWin.com. We're going to spend the next hour looking at uh, different charts, showing you how I trade price action, giving you a little bit of information on how you can look at the markets as well. I try to stay away from indicators, as you know. And I also have hundreds and hundreds of videos on YouTube and also on the Day Trade to Win uh, website where you can take a look at and learn from. So let me show you here first before I begin the Day Trade to Win website. And there you go. And the website here, just if this is the first time you're, you're looking at this, we're looking at learning how to trade price action. So the idea here is to look at either private mentorship, software, courses, recent trades, and videos. Now the one thing that I think is the best part of this is the free downloads. And so the free downloads section here of the website is uh, one of the areas where you have access to uh, some indicators as well as calendars as well as um, a bar timer here for TradeStation 9, a tick counter. These are tools that don't exist for TradeStation 9. They're not defaulted. And so you can get all this free software at the software page, free downloads. So I just wanted to show you if you have never been to DayTrade to win.com you can check out the entire website it has lots of great information there's also a blog it has lots and lots of videos and information you can check out the videos page here all right Rick are you able to see that website so before I begin we have a new mentorship class starting on March 24th 2014 so if you have any questions, you can download everything that's included, a syllabus, as well as all the information that's included within the eight weeks of the mentorship program. It is all-inclusive, so everything is included. Before we begin, just a little disclaimer here, making sure that everyone understands that a trading is risky. Please, before you decide to risk any money, know what you're doing have stops, talk to your broker, there is risk. So for those of you who are interested in learning how to trade futures or stocks or any other type of trading, you should be aware of this disclaimer, okay? So today's webinar is going to focus on price action. I want to show you a little bit on how we decode it, how we trade it, how we look at it, really focusing on price action. A lot of the of the webinars that I do, um, I actually show you what I'm doing. So it's going to be a great educational um, add to what you've already learned in your trading career. We're going to look at indicators versus price action. I want to try to understand what the difference is between trading indicators as well as price action. I'm also looking at today's trades, how we did in the markets. I'm going to show you some Atlas Line trades, so it is possible to become independent as a trader. So today is February 25th, 2014, and this is what the E-mini S&P market looks like. I like to, to use a five-minute chart, and this is how most of you saw the day. Market went down, market went up then it came back down but what if instead of just looking at you know market going up and down and seeing this after the fact let's try to understand how we can put some rules and go long or go short when the timing is right so I'm gonna switch over here to a chart this is a ninja trader chart of today and this chart, if everyone can see that okay, all right, there you go. You should be able to see that chart. And so this chart here is a chart of uh, the E-mini S&P. And what I want to do is I want to add a few tools to this chart. 
It doesn't have to be complicated, and it doesn't have to be the conventional indicators that everybody is probably looking at, like moving averages and MACDs. I'm going to add a, a few things. The first thing I'm going to add, which I think is very important, and it's not just with uh, the e-mini market, it's with any type of trading that you're doing, I want to add a bar timer. So the first thing I'm going to do here is add a bar timer. And the bar timer pretty much provides me a countdown of 5 minutes or 15 minutes or hour so I know exactly when a candle opens as well as when a candle closes. I also want to add something called the ATR, another tool here in your indicator list, the average true range, which I already have here. And the setting I'm going to use is 4 or 5. I like to use a setting of 4. And what this tells me is that if I'm looking at entering into any type of trade, I need to know what the current conditions are. So one of the tools that you should be using day in and day out is what type of market conditions are we in and what I can expect out of the market. You can't trade the same way when the market is slow as when it's fast. The stops have to be larger when the market's fast and you have to trade a little bit differently when the market's slow. So you have to know when the market's fast, when the market's slow. You also have to have an understanding of what the expectation. So in any type of trading that I do, I try not to just add a ton of indicators on my chart. I want to keep it as simple as you see it. Now, how do we know when the market's too slow or how do we know when the market's too fast? It's very simple. Whenever you have a situation where on a five minute chart, these bars that you see here plotting are unable to really go anywhere or move. You're going to look at anything less than one point on the average true range on the ATR to tell me. Let me just make this a little bit thicker here so you can see it a bit better. So anything less than four ticks, whether it be on the E-mini or on the currencies, I want to be very careful because what you have under these type of conditions is the market just whipsawing or going back and forth and back and forth and flip-flopping. Very, very common. So when you see here, for example, this activity, you say to yourself, this is happens to be in the Globex session or my overnight, what can I do with this? Because the market is just flip-flopping here. It goes up, it goes down, very tight range. Well, if you look at the ATR down here, you can also see it corresponds with the market being under four ticks. And that means that, on average, these bars that you see are unable to go anywhere. There's nobody trading. This becomes very difficult for anyone, really, to go long or go short because there's nothing happening. So whenever you see the average true range fall below four ticks in the E-mini here, it's one point, just know what to expect. And there's a whole lot of nothing here that you can do. Therefore, if you're going to take a trade, make sure that the ATR is above one point. That way I know that the current conditions are six ticks, eight ticks, up here happen to be about three points or 12 ticks and that way you know what the expectation is. Now when the market's too volatile, it's too fast, there's also an extreme to the upside. That extreme happens to be five points or 20 ticks. So when you see the market starting to trade four points which happens to be 16 ticks, 18 ticks, 20 ticks, right away you say to yourself well I can't have a one point stop because I know that the market can go up or down at least 20 ticks, 4 points, 5 points when the volatility or the ATR shows me that that's what the current conditions are doing. So if you have a too, too small of a stop, you're going to get stopped out prematurely. So look at the current conditions and it will guide you how much profit you should take, how large your stop should be. Should you even trade if it's too fast or too small? And by the way, if anyone has any questions, please go ahead and um, type away. You don't have to wait until the end. 
If there's something that I'm showing you that's not clear you want an explanation on, I'll be happy to show it to you. So feel free to type away there if you have any questions, okay? I'll answer all the questions that I can. Okay, so these are the extremes. Now, obviously for currencies, the currencies work a little bit more volatile than the than the E-mini S&P, so maybe give it 25 ticks as opposed to 20 ticks as far as an extreme, okay? When you should be trading and when you shouldn't be trading. Now, my preference is to look at when a market opens moving forward because that is when we have the best liquidity, okay? So when the market opens here for me it happens to be 930. When the market opens here at 930, this is where I start looking for opportunities. Not that you can't look for opportunities pre-market, but be very careful when this is too slow to trade. It really does wake up. Now, I showed you on the uh, the day trade to win page, those of you who saw it, that the news is very important. And I'm going to try to go over some news items with us to, with you today. And how do I trade the news? Some of you may already know this because there's a lot of videos that show how I trade the news, but I'll try to go over it today. So the idea is to be very careful when there's a news event because the market could go up, could go down, could have a swing of 8 to 10 points, 6 to 10 points. This is very dangerous. So instead of me just guessing or bracketing off where I hope the market's going to go to, I definitely recommend just to hang loose, wait a little bit, and say, during this chaotic time, maybe it's five or ten minutes, stay back. Don't go into um, a trade until the chaos is over. And once the chaos is over, you can then re-enter. And then it's a lot clearer. So I'll go over that in a little bit. Uh, Lou says here, do you use the ATR setting for all the time frames, the setting of four? I do, uh, Lou. It doesn't matter if you're using a daily chart, a weekly chart, or a an hourly chart, I use the setting of four on the ATR. It always tells me what the most recent current conditions are in that time frame. Now, I'm going to take this off the chart, all this stuff off the chart. And so we started off here saying we're going to add a few tools. We added the, the ATR and we added the the bar timer and as you see the market goes up it went down first then went up then came down starting to go up so the goal here is to say what am I going to do with this how am I going to enter long or short so let me add here the atlas line indicator which is proprietary through day trade to win and this is the orders that the atlas line produces now you see here a short you see here a long you see here some S's and some P's. You see here a couple of longs over here. You see here a short. Now, I don't make any mystery about it, how these orders are produced. It should be no secret. You should know when these orders are about to take place in order to prepare yourself. So I'm really trying to stay away from looking at the chart and living and dying by each tick waiting for a you know some text to pop up to say long or short the reason why we have a long here and a short here is because you can see let me just expand this here there's two candles consecutively that are closing below the atlas line here and two consecutive candles here that are plotting above the atlas line so when I look at the relationship of where price is in, re in regards to the Atlas line, then I can say I want to go short, I want to go long. I also have to have very specific stops, very specific targets. These S's and these P's are additional trades to go long based on strength trades and pullback trades. So besides the double bar long and double bar short, there's a bias. If price is above the atlas line I'm gonna look for buying opportunities here if price is below the atlas line I'm gonna look for selling opportunities so here you have a, a situation where the price for the most part stayed above the atlas line so I know that my bias is long 
But now let's pinpoint the entries. The entries are, if there's two consecutive closes, I want to go long. This entry price, 1844.75, is exactly what the text displays to go long at. So there should not be any mystery on whether or not it's a long trade and at what price. It will always be the closing price of the second candle. Now you can turn these signals on or off. If you look at here the atlas line, uh, you can turn on or off the bounce trades, the uh, double bar trades here, double bar long, which is trade double closes, pullback trades and strength trades. So you can turn these on or off. So more importantly is know where you enter, know what your stops are, know what your targets are. So for example, if I look at this first trade of the day, right here, double bar short, and this is today, 1839.50, what does this tell me? It tells me that the market's heading down. It tells me that there were two consecutive closes below the Atlas line. It gives me a short trade, plain and simple. Next, I look at the current conditions. So if you look here at the current conditions, it says 2.38. This tells me that if I go short on the trade, then I know that going for 10 points or 5 points may not be feasible. I know that if I try to go for 2 points, then I have something. So this current condition tells me using the ATR tells me what my expectations are. So if you look at this here and you say I'm going to go for two points because this is what the market's been doing the last four bars 1839.50, 1837.50 I know that I have an opportunity to take two points and then if I want to trail a stop after that that's fine but I know what my current conditions are. So as I go forward here in time if you look at where the market moved exactly it moved two points and a little bit, maybe two and a quarter, two and a half, but it moved exactly what was predicted. This to me is of utmost importance. I, I talk to a lot of traders and they always say to me, you know, I go long, I go short, um, and I hope for a point or I hope for uh, three points or you know I'm looking for the market to continue in that direction and that all sounds great but we have to be objective about it we have to say if I go short why and if I take a certain profit why why are you taking that profit and what are your stops and why are you taking those stops so everything is outlined in the type of trading that I do I try to be objective and I also try uh, there to uh, be as clean as possible just having the atlas line indicator in your chart tells me the direction that I want to go in long or short. It tells me the exact entry. It tells me uh, what target I should take at, at what time. It tells me a lot. And that's exactly what I'm looking for. I'm looking for uh, something very specific once I enter into the market and why I'm entering into the market. Now the same thing here. This is a double bar long, 1844.75. So it's very specific why I'm going long. I look at the current conditions. This is about two and a half points. So I know that if I go long here, my expectation is two and a half points. Now, personally, I'm not sure if I would hold this this entire length of time because the stops that I use incorporate time. They incorporate a catastrophic stop. They incorporate a prove it stop. And so it's all laid out for me. So personally, I'm not sure if I would have held on to this entire back and forth here. There's a strength trade here to go long. There's a pullback trade here to go long. There's a strength trade here to go long. So I have additional opportunities to go long, but at least half the battle is won. I know the direction, and now I pinpoint where I enter. Uh, Daryl, the Atlas line is calculated based on support and resistance. If you remember from um, high school, I'm not sure how old you are, but if you remember from school, you learned something called the tangent <clears throat> and cotangent of the angle. Uh, when it comes to geometry, this is what the atlas line is based off of. Okay, Now it's a proprietary code and it's pretty complicated, but I'll tell you one thing, there's not any type of optimization or moving averages or trend lines or Fibonacci's or GAN or MACD's or anything at all 
incorporated into what the outline is about. It does focus on, if anything, support and resistance, and then it takes into account the angles of what the price is trading at. Okay, so this is, you're looking at today, right, today. So what if you wanted to trade um, not the E-mini, maybe you want to trade the Euro, maybe you want to trade overnight, right? A lot of traders that I work from, from Asia and Australia, they obviously have a little bit of a time problem because of the difference in time zone, so they want to look at overnight. You can absolutely update the atlas line. I'll add another atlas line and it'll start plotting at, instead of the US session, you can set it for the European session. So here we have the London Open. This is again, I live in Eastern Standard Time Zone, so this would be from my time zone. This would be where you would start the Atlas line. You have an opportunity here to go short. Again, no, no, no mystery. I make no secrets about it. One, two, consecutive candles to go short and 1844 coincides with the closing price of the second candle. These happen to be bounce trades here as well as pullback and strength all to go short. You have it here another double bar short and then long. So knowing what direction to take it in is half the battle. All right, so this was uh, today a very clean day, and I showed you what you would have done using the Atlas line, where exactly to go short, and where exactly to go long. So what is price action, right, and how do we trade it? So if you're looking at how the markets work, I do believe that everything is being played out in front of you as you see it. So if you go long, if you go short, it should be, you, there should be enough evidence on a plain chart to tell you that. You shouldn't need moving averages or stochastics or bands, Bollinger Bands, or anything at all, Fibonacci's. I don't think, I don't use any of that in anything I teach. I don't even use candlestick interpretation. Even though I think candlestick interpretation is important, you should know dojis and shooting stars, but I don't use any of that in any of my trading. Instead, I want to concentrate on what the market is doing to lead me to decide where I should take a trade. Now, having a blueprint to execute, execute the trade is very important. It's essential. Don't trade without having some type of blueprint. Trading price action is really how professional traders do it. I've never seen when I was at the floor, somebody say, you know, where's that stochastic? Or, you know, what is the MACD doing? Or, you know, where's the simple moving average uh, for today? They never look at that. There's only two things they look at, time and price. If you ever go down on the floor on the CME, all they're looking at is the board, time and price. Now, what is the price telling you? I always ask myself, what is this market telling me? Is it making new highs? Is it making new lows? Are we retracing? Is it support? Is it resistance? What is the price really telling me? What are the current conditions? Is the market slow? Is the market fast? Or is there news? All these things definitely have to be accounted for before you go long or short. Some traders insist on following indicators instead of following what the candles are, are doing, but I don't think a lot of traders have success when using indicators because of the optimization factor. You have to optimi optimize what happened in history in order for you to hopefully replicate that into the future, and that really doesn't happen. Let's take a look at another example. This is yesterday, February 24th. I'm going to stick on this example here for a little bit. This um, chart, the E-mini chart yesterday, shows a great trend, right? It was trending up the entire day, and, and then towards the end of the day, uh, it started to fall, it started to retrace back. But for the major part of the day, it was all the way up. So what if I told you that you could have definitely known this direction was long? So what if I told you that this day would have been able 
using the atlas line or other methods to tell you to go long and long and long the entire day. Okay, so this is yesterday. So let me go and switch over to the the chart. Hang tight. I'll show you what the atlas line did using a chart from yesterday. Okay, so this is yesterday. Here is that same chart using the atlas line. The entire day was only long. There are no short trades here whatsoever. Again, there's no mystery here. One, two, 1848.50 to go long. You have here pullback trades, strength trades, pullback trades, and there's no other pullback or strength trade as the market goes down. So you don't have any other trades based off the outline to go long. For the pullback and strength trades, the market needs to go higher and higher and higher. So you don't have these. The market's starting to come back and retrace back. So this was yesterday. Now, look at the current conditions. Two and a half points, two and three quarters of a point. Then it drops down to about a six ticks, seven ticks, and it gets smaller and smaller. So anyone who has the Atlas line just kept on going long and long and long the entire day. But what if I could show you that there is something else that you could use to also know whether or not to go long or short? One of the methods that I teach, and this is available if you just go to daytrade21.com, you can download a video that shows exactly how this is done. But let me remove here everything off the chart. And I'm going to separate the day out. And this method is just based off of price action. It is breaking up the day into three sections. It's called the ABC method, ABC system. I actually have this coded as a, an indicator here, the ABC method here. I'll show it to you in just a moment. And the way that this works is that we're going to outline the day 9.30, two and a half hours later to 12.30, two and a half hours later to two and a half hours later to be 12, and then 14.30. This is considered the A part of the day. This is considered the B part of the day. And this is considered the C part of the day. That's the reason why I call it the ABC method. Now the idea with this price action it doesn't even matter if it's based off of the e-mini or the euro or stocks it's all the same markets work exactly the same way so I'm showing you here this on the e-mini but the rules are exactly the same on other markets what I want to do is I want to outline the highest high and lowest low here of the A part of the day and so what do I know about the A part of the day? Well, I know that the market is the has the highest volatility. I know that there's a lot of opportunities. So I know that if you're looking at the A part of the day, this is the day where the most money is made. I also know as you go into the B part of the day that the market gets uh, smaller or tighter or it starts to slow down. It's called lunchtime. And so you can see here that the ATR doesn't get higher it gets smaller and smaller so if I'm going to forecast whether or not we're going to have a trending day I am going to look at whether or not price breaks the high or breaks the low of a again you can look at the video and how exactly how I do this it's available for free on daytrade2win.com and I look at two consecutive closes trading above or below the range of A that was made. So what you see here yesterday is that it did not. It did not close consecutively above showing me that we're going to continue higher and higher and higher. So if I was going to take if I was going to take any long trade it would have to be showing me that we are, we are in a trend and the markets going higher and higher and higher. Anyone, anyone have any questions on that? Okay, Daryl, you good with that? George, Dave, and Jim, everybody else? Okay, 
Now, I am going to do the same thing what I just did now. I'm going to, instead of looking at the relationship from A to B, I'm going to look for the relationship between B and C. So the C part of the day, the last part of the day, is a late day rally, late day sell off. This is very important because we have at times opportunities to go long or short as the day is ending. So I am going to break up the day from the highest high to the lowest low. I'm sorry, I'm going to break up the B part of the day, I should say, the highest high and lowest low, and now I have a range for the middle part of the day. Now, I want to think about this as if I don't know the future. I don't know if the market's going to go up or if the market's going to go down. I have no idea. But I can tell you that if we see and we have proof that the market's closing consecutively by two candles above or below the range of B, I have a trade. I'm going long, I'm going short, based on what price action is telling me. So this is what B would look like at the end of at 2.30 here, Eastern Standard. As I go forward in time, what do you think? Is this an opportunity to go short? Two consecutive closes above or below. That's my short trade right there. This is Eastern Standard Time. Correct, Mike. So it's breaking the higher low of B. I'm going short. So every day, this is an excellent tool that you could use moving forward in whichever market that you decide to trade to break out the day, break up the day to know if we have a trend up and up and up, or if we have a late day rally or late day sell off, or if the market is normal or average. And the way that the market works, that is normal or average, is that it stays contained. This B part of the day, about 80%, 85% of the time, stays contained within this A. And about 80 or 85% of the time, this C part of the day st stays contained within the B. But when something different happens, when it breaks out above or below, you have an opportunity. Okay? Anyone have any questions on this? And this is the Atlas line. Okay. So let me switch back to the PowerPoint. Let me show you a few other things here. So this was February 24th, 2012. Right, and this is the plain chart that I just had. Okay, so what occurs in price? I like to see how price moves, how it flows. I'm not using any type of time and sales or anything along those lines, but I like to look at how price moves. So price action is more than just watching the price. You have to wait. You have to be ready. You have to ignore all other influences. Some traders have the news on and the... Um, the pundits on the TV telling you everything is bad or everything is good. Ignore it. Just look at what's happening on the chart. Everybody's saying that the market is bad, but yet yesterday was highest highs ever in the S&P. Indicators that try to catch scalping will always be behind. So if you're trying to use an indicator to tell you to go long or go short, it's always a step behind because that indicator has to plot what price already did in order to tell you what to do. So it's essentially a step behind. So when price makes a move, the bar or candle closes and posts. The indicator will always wait until that candle closes to calculate it, and then it'll plot that information. So the move is over, um, and you're actually acting on something that has already already occurred. So and that's why using an indicator for any type of uh, tight scalping is always a bad idea because it's too late at that time. I want to show you something else. I want to show you uh, a little bit of how front running when trading the electronic markets is very important. Because as you know, we can have a limit order waiting and waiting and waiting to be filled and it'll just hit that price and hit that price and the way it works is you have to 
to get in line or a queue in order to be filled. So I definitely anticipate when a price move before it happens and I use these tools to tell me. Um, there is something called a manipulation that happens Cornell in the market and manipulation happens all the time. It's something I teach in the mentorship program which you can anticipate where the market is going to stop and reverse based on manipulation that's happening. So I definitely can look at the market and say it's going to stop here or stop there and use it not only as a filter but also uh, use it to get me in into a trade as it reverses. When you talk about uh, front running a trade I want you to look at this example here. Let's say that you have a price at sixty sixty dollars here in a stock or commodity and you're waiting for this sixty dollar price and you can see that it tries once and it misses it tries a second time it misses it tries a third time and misses it tries a fourth time and misses it if you think of these candles as five minute bars this is about twenty five minutes that it's trying and failing to reach the price of sixty so i want to use that and interpret that as saying maybe we're hitting resistance or maybe my target of 60 is never going to be reached. So front running a trade and front running used to be a very bad word where people used to manipulate with insider information uh, the markets and I'm not using it in that fashion. Instead I want to say if everyone is trying to get a price of 60 I am going to place my trade in front of that. That's why I call it front running. I'm going to place my target or my entry in front of that value in order to ensure a fill. Yes, you would uh, definitely um, lose a tick, but so what? If you can take two points out of this or seven uh, ticks, point three quarters, what is one tick going to do? It's going to ensure that you get filled. It's going to make sure that uh, you're able to get out of a trade and, and instead it may be a losing trade. So front running is important. So now how do I use front running? Well, if you have a target that's 60 and you see it trying once and failed, trying twice and failed, here you're on a third candle trying and it failed. I want you to use a little common sense and say I may not get this 60 price I'm going to place my target a tick below it maybe at uh, 55 or 57 or 58 but the goal is to get out of a trade successfully and not hope that it's actually going to happen so use front running to your advantage so front running a trade guarantees a fill both in entering and exiting using a limit order with the loss of one tick. It's good for not only scalping but normal trading. So if you're scalping and you're trying to get three ticks and it's just hitting two or maybe it is hitting the three ticks but you're not getting filled, drop it down, take your two ticks and run. And you can jump in on the very next trade and you don't have to worry about a stop or a break even or trailing stop or anything along those lines because that you're in, you're out, but you have to give it a chance to reach 60. Any questions on that? Cornell, you okay with that? Rick, okay. All right, so let's take a look at indicators versus price action. Have you noticed how the market is lately? Well, the market is at all-time highs. It could be chopping. Uh, when you look at in an indicator versus price action, an indicator can only work in either a chopping motion or a trending motion you can't have the same value for both. It typically doesn't work. So how are your indicators doing? Most traders that I talk to definitely have three or four indicators. I would say to you uh, it's best to stick with one or none when trading. That's why I, I really try to stay away from any type of indicator. The market's been chop chop lately making indicators possible to use. Yesterday was a trend. Today was up and down. Recent market activity has been extremely erratic, right? Nobody knows where this market is going. So how can we trade this up, down, then strong, then sideways? You can definitely trade this method, but 
you have to look at it differently. So where does this leave us as traders? Well, as a trader, we wait too long, we enter late, we miss trades, we get out late, and more because we refuse to follow what price is doing. So the first indication is that if you see the market beginning to go higher, use that as proof. Or if the market's going down, use it as proof instead of holding on to a losing trade. Let price always show you not an indicator. So if any decision that you make, let the candles themselves show you. If you see uh, the market starting to flip-flop and channel back and forth, becoming very tight, and you have the ATR showing you that it's less than a point or hovering on a point, you know what's happening, right? Price is doing nothing at the time. Trust what the price is doing, not what you hope will happen. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, somebody wants to see the ABC again. Uh, I'll show you the ABC um, Tigran, I think your name is Tigran, in just a moment. So I'll definitely show you uh, the ABC and I'll show you the indicator for that as well. So today's trades, how do we do in the market? What you learn goes beyond courses. So what I teach goes beyond just a course or a method or a trading room or a chat room or a follow me type of trade. I want you to learn exactly what to do at any point in time. So I can tell you where the market will reverse. Uh, this is also called a blueprint or a roadmap that I teach and everything is exact with price entries, not ballpark figures. There is always a reason to enter or exit a trade. So if you're just jumping in and jumping out, let's try not to do that. Let's try to know exactly what we're doing. Okay, so I'll show you some more, more charts in just a moment. So what is the Atlas line? It's not based off of any indicator. Um, I show you exactly how to trade it, why it works, how you can use it for filtering trades and to stay on the right side of the market. Uh, you can trade any market with the Atlas line and it gives three entries, the strength, the pullback, the double bar long, double bar short, and even gives you bounce trades when it's bouncing off of the Atlas line. But being objective is very important. So the stops that you learn, the targets that you learn, it's all spelled out for you. How do you filter trades? Some of you just try to um, look at the market and say, I think it's going to go up or I think it's going to go down. Look at the ATR. If the market's too slow, stay out. If the market's too volatile, stay out. So you can filter a trade that way. Um, two to three points is normal for the E-mini. Um, when it's slower, remember, less than a point. Understand what it means. When it's fast, it's um, a little bit more, it's five points. And you have to trade defensively because um, 20 ticks up and down on a current market condition is very strong. A lot of traders are just getting stopped out. So don't allow for price to fake you out and take you out. If it's so, always have a stop that's a little bit larger than the ATR just so you know that you're going to stay in that trade. Let's take a look at a, uh, a few a few charts. Um, any chance of having the ATR programmed into the Atlas line? Lou is asking. So it could give you entry but also exits. That's a great question. I'm working on it right now. Uh, Lou, I have updated the Atlas line, added filters where you can turn them on or off within the last few years and so that's definitely something that I want to do. Give exact targets and exact exits. But you know the problem with the exits Lou is I use uh, three or four different exit strategies. The exit strategies that I use are all based off of something different. So it's not a hard stop. I mean, it's not as if I entered a trade and say, I'm going to give this trade two points and that's it. There's more to it. So for example, if I enter into a trade and it takes more than 25 minutes for this trade to complete a profit target, then I'm out of the trade. It's a time-based element that I use. If there's proof 
that the market is trading against where I want it to go. I call it a prove it stop, which is a close on the opposite side. That's another stop. So whichever stop hits first, I take. The target is always one times the ATR. So adding the the targets to the um, Atlas line, that can be done. It's not a problem. I think more more importantly, the stops, because we're using a variety of stops, whichever happens first, I want to be covered. If there's proof, if it takes too long, if um, there's some type of pivot that I shouldn't be broken, um, I want to incorporate whichever happens first into my stop strategy. And I think that is where I'm trying to get with the programmer to get that over over through. Okay. Let's take a look at a a couple of charts here. And I'll show you the ABC again for uh, Tigran. Okay. So here we have um, the ABC. Let me actually remove this here, the Atlas line from the chart. And I'll remove here everything off the chart. Okay, so nice clean chart, and we can go back any anywhere. It doesn't really matter. I'll just go back here to some some time in the chart, um, and let's take a look here. I'll add the ABC indicator to make it simple, but you can definitely do this on your own. It's not difficult, uh, but I have this coded, and everyone who attends the mentorship program gets all of my programs, whether it be the ATO, the Atlas line two scalping methods, this ABC method, the roadmap, the blueprint, it's all inclusive. So when I add this here, it outlines the high, you can see it there, and the low of the A part of the day. See that? So this is coded already. Here is the B part of the day, and again, 80 to 85 percent of the time, B does nothing. It just stays locked and whipsawed back and forth within the range of A, which it is right here. And then you have the C, which is two candles closing above or below for a late day rally or sell off. So here is a long trade. And I'm not sure if you can see that text. Let's see if I can push push that text here to the front of the chart. I'm not sure if you can see that. But this um, indicator provides the, the entry 1794.50 to go long. So this is for um, during the day. Now if you want to look at this ABC method at night or the after hours, why not? It's the London Open. It works the same way. So why don't we just change the time to start the ABC and instead of it starting at the US Open, we started for the London Open. Remember this is my my time zone here, Eastern Standard New York time. It would be 3 o'clock in the morning for the London Open. So why not? And so we're going to have here the ABC pattern for the London Open. So here is the A, B, nothing happened. Here is C, and I don't know if you can see that text there. There to go short. Let's see if we can make that a little bit larger here. Right there, to go short. Right, I can actually add another one too. The ABC for 9:30, so I can actually have them both running at the same time. Here is the A. Here is the B. Here is the C. And so on and so on and so on. Here is the A. Here is the B. Here is the a, B, C, and so on and so on. You got it, Lou. Just remind me, okay? All right, anyone have any questions for me? So what have we learned? We learned the um, ABC splitting up the day, two and a half hours, A, the next two and a half hours, B, the last part of the day is a little bit smaller. It's an hour and 45 minutes. Look for two consecutive closings above or below. Uh, Jim says here, so the ABC trade is to trade the C portion of the day. Mm, well, the any well, not just the C part of the day. It could be traded. Um, the relationship is if the middle part of the day, 
Jim is going to show me that there's a trend up or a trend down. Trends don't happen all the time. More often than not, the market whipsaws during the day. And so I want to know, is the day going to be a trending day or not? The B part of the day, this B part of the day, is the heads up. It tells me whether or not, because the characteristics of a trending day tell me that it'll break almost always it'll continue higher and push and push higher or lower right so the relationship is here to here is price going to break the range of a and if so it will not always obviously you know you this is not this is not a hundred percent but you can forecast that we're going to have a trend up for the entire day or trend down for the entire day and so that's why you see here this price here I don't know if you can see that to go short because there's two consecutive closes here telling you that it's uh, breaking the range of A, this being A, and it leads me to believe that we're going to have a trend to the downside. So if you looked at this day, just this day by itself, it looks like this. And if you're going to forecast it, look for it to break above or below the range of A. Now that same relationship could be used uh, Jim, not just on uh, the A to B, but also on the B and C, so this being C, the last part of the day. If there's a, a rally or sell-off into the end of the day, let me know about it, let me understand it, because it's not normal. What's normal is that it just stays contained as we go into the close. This here is a sell-off, and if I'm able to catch that, then I want to go and take advantage of it. Okay, and this happens to be during the London, London market or the life exchange or pre-market on the E-mini. Okay. Sometimes you have to endure a little bit of heat, but that's with everything. You, you can't expect to have two ticks stop, right, Jim? Now this method, the ABC. It's, I don't want to call it a trading system, because that's not really how um, I look at it. So I'm not looking at it as a trading system. I'm looking at it as a guide. So that's why I want you to look at it. It's a guide to tell me, are we going to trend, or is the day just going to flip-flop normally, or do I have an opportunity? So some traders use it as a system. I have... I mean, this is just the tip of the iceberg. What I teach you during the, the mentorship and what's learned in the Atlas line goes well above and beyond the ABC method. If anything, use this as a guide, just a guide, to tell me um, what my expectations are. Okay. So here is the high and low during the US Open, 1-2 guess what this tells me that we're gonna have a trend so I'm long and I don't think that you should hold it for 10 points but you can definitely take something out of it all right so this is the ABC okay I have a, an hour here with you and one thing I, I do want to say is I want to thank Kevin for allowing me to put on this presentation at OTC as well as Rick from Global Futures, a great broker. If you have any questions uh, on opening up a brokerage account, I would say contact Rick at Global Futures. He can answer all your questions, Rick Contra. Um, Jim says here, I understand, trying to understand entry, target, and stops on this example. Okay, so to take a look at this example here. Would you say, um, let's take a look here for Jim. If you're looking for an opportunity, the opportunity occurs when the market breaks above or below the range of A, this being A. You see that, uh, Jim, I think it is? Jim. Did it break and give me two consecutive closes above or below? I should say here. What do you think? Jim. 
right? Did you see? Do you see two consecutive closes? And the answer is no, right? Because it got stuck here. So this is the range of A here, and price going to B got stuck. It did not continue higher or continue lower, right? Okay. So the market's doing exactly what it does every single day, 85% of the time. There's nothing to see here, ladies and gentlemen. So that's the way I look at it. It's normal. But when the market doesn't do this and it actually uh, breaks, then I can say it's doing something other than it's going higher or lower. Hence, I can almost tell you that it, the day is going to end higher or close lower because it in interprets that is that the day is going to trend and continue going. So this is um, the relationship between what's happening in A and in B. I'm also using that same relationship to look at if there's a sell-off or a rally towards the end of the day. So this being C, oops, here, I'm looking at price closing consecutively, two consecutive closes above or below B, because I don't want a false breakout. I want to be absolutely sure we're uh, going higher or lower. So this entry that you see here, 1841.50, occurred, I'll show you, Again, no secret, one, two consecutive closes below the range of B. So we're trading in the C, the C part of the day. We're looking to see, is the market going to get stuck there, or is it going to um, break out of that? This is your entry, 1841.50, based on the closing price of this doji. Jim, you see that? That's the reason. So always have a reason for whether going long or short. Okay. Uh, some of the stops uh, I choose. I think there was a question here, Zach, I believe, um, about uh, stops, right? So the stops are basically. Let me just share my PowerPoint again here. The stops are uh, relative. Some stops uh, are break-even stops. Some stops are based off of proof, which is a small loss. Some stops are catastrophic stops, which if the market moves against you as soon as you enter, then um, you have to have a stop there in place. So it's not a one-size-fits-all. I will tell you that as soon as you enter into the trade, let's say you have an opportunity, Atlas Line, Blueprint, uh, Roadmap, at the open, it doesn't matter. As soon as you enter the, into the trade, you have to have a stop that's at least as large as the ATR, the current conditions, or a little bit larger. So you have to have a stop that's large enough to keep you in the trade. From that point on, as you move forward, let's say that it starts to whipsaw, or it almost hits your target. At that point, you manage it differently. You manage it with time. You manage it with proof. You man manage it with based off of pivots. And at the end, the goal is to say, I went into the trade, I gave it an opportunity to go higher, move in my favor so I can take a profit. It didn't happen. Where are we? And let me get out. So it may be a small win or a small loss or a break-even trade at the end of the day, but you have to have a stop initially when you enter that's larger than the ATR. Zach, you got it, Rick. You're welcome to answer your question. All right, any other questions? All right, great. I can be reached at support at daytrade2win.com, or you can call me toll-free. Uh, the next group mentorship class starts March 24th. Usually these classes fill up, so I try to keep them very small. A couple of traders, just you and me, eight weeks. Let me know if you have any questions, or you can download uh, right online, you can download the syllabus and packet, which gives you the information on pricing, uh, what's covered, everything's included, and then call me if you have any questions. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll talk to everybody soon. I'll try to put this video online on uh, YouTube and uh, on the videos page of Day Trade to Win, and then email me if you have any questions. 
Hello, everyone. Again, thank you so much for your time and your participation. I apologize. We did run three minutes over. So thank you again, everyone. Have a great day. Bye for now.